Hey, what's happening everybody? Back to this balloon fishing stuff. We're kind of to the rods and the rods that I chose and why I chose them. This is once again uncharted territory. I know I'm not, the, I didn't come up with this. Now, I've had some comments already about people saying, you know, this is not a new concept. I know it's not a new concept. Like I said, a fellow told me about this 18 years ago and I've seen people in Lake Calaveras, south of San Antonio, floating balloons out for catfish and stuff, hybrids with the wind to their back. I've seen it done in other applications. I've just never seen it done on the Gulf, off the beach, around here. So there's really nothing for me to go by to apply it to toothy kings and shark and stuff like that. So I'm having to kind of develop this as I go. But let's take a look at the rods and I'll just kind of tell you how I just came about what I'm using at this point. It's gonna evolve, so stay tuned. All right, I just went over to my rod rack. Um, I had no way of knowing what to use other than I knew that I was gonna need a lot of line. All the inshore was out of the question. So I went over here to some of these older school BTB rods I used to use, and I figured these would carry truckloads of 20, 30 pound braid, and I could send it out hundreds and hundreds of yards. So that's kind of why I gravitated toward these conventional reels as opposed to even like a 6,000 rod that we would use in the kayak. So I grabbed the two biggest line capacity reels I had, but like I say, a year from now, this will probably change. I'll probably actually go get a giant pin senator or something big that will hold even more line and I can increase my line diameter, increase the amount that I take. So this is kind of what I ended up with. I had this old Kuma convector, 30L, and I spooled it up with a bunch of old 20 to 30 pound test. Off, I cleaned off a bunch of my inshore rods is what I did to try to save some money. And um, I don't think that was a very good choice. I did have some break offs in some of the old stuff. So now I've got a spoon full of 40 pound braid, maybe 50, I think it's 50 actually. 50 pound spider wire to the brim, brand new piece, no cuts in it, no connections. Of course I lost half a spool when the boat cut me off. And then over here, my second biggest rod that I had to work with anyway, or well, second biggest reel, excuse me. It came as a, a package deal with the rod and this old Kuma, looked like it would hold a lot of line and it actually ended up holding a little bit less than this Okuma convector. So once again just an old boat rod. I filmed a lot of kinkfish trolling with this especially in Texas. This old convector I have on an old Gulfstream All-Star. It's a seven foot rod I used to troll in boats with for kings and stuff. So it's just some old stuff I had. I don't have anything specialized for this style of fishing. I'm just kind of making do with what I've got. Like I said, I'm probably going to try to get hold of an old pen senator with a big diameter so I can put 400 yards of 40 or 50 on there and really send, send that balloon far. Uh, the 15, 20, even 30 is looking a little light. We've had some break offs and I think because you have so many hundreds of yards of line out at sea, there's just a lot that can go wrong if, with the balloon pulling. It puts a lot of tension. The fast runs put a lot of tension. So I think upgrading to 40 to 50 was a wise choice. That's kind of where I'm at with the, with the rods and the reels. I don't have a lot of big shark avids laying around. I'm sure something like that or a big pin senator would be great. If y'all have any ideas on what might be good for this ballooning, make sure you comment below because I'm now at an impasse. I'm just using what I've got and I'm looking toward the future now trying to figure out what would be a good rod what would be a great reel, a large line capacity reel, something like for sharks that I could put a ton of 50 on it, send it out there and get further out, maybe try to get into the pelagics, maybe even a little further to get into maybe some of the black fin tuna that we saw jumping or something. Like I said, this is all experimental. On a, I can't imagine trying this on an impounded lake on a, on a reservoir because you can actually drive around the reservoir. You can go on any wind day. If you have an east wind, you just drive to the to the east side and put that wind at your back and float it out for big striper or for big catfish. I see a ton of applications in bays off the bank. If you've been catching fish off balloons, comment below. If you got ideas on how to get my balloons out further, comment below. If you haven't seen the other four videos in this series, make sure you go check it out because they're there. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time right here on 30 Miles Out Tips with Tyler. What? Happy ballooning.